Hello Cardboard Lovers, Cardboard Badger here, I hope you're doing well and today we have a standard legal deck tech for you so I would like to introduce to you Black White Reservoir Horse so uh, we don't have many horses in standard at the moment but I thought Crested Sun Mare needed some attention so I've produced what I hope uh, will be quite a fun deck with the exception of a few cards this deck is very cheap to build indeed so if we start the creatures first, we have 26 in total, uh, with an opportunity to bring some of them back later in the game uh, with much greater value. In one drop slot, we have a playset of Sacred Cat. Uh, one white mana, we have a 1 1 cat, and he has lifelink. So, um, this is always a good start. We will gain some life early. And if he dies, we've got Embalm. So, for one white mana, we can exile this card from our graveyard and create a token copy of it except the token is a white zombie cat. Getting our cat back is good, but with other cards in the deck it will gain more value, uh, which we will see shortly. For the two drops, uh, we will start with a playset of Gifted Aetherborn uh, for two mana, black black. Uh, we have a 2-3 Aetherborn Vampire, uh, it has Death Touch, and it also has Lifelink. Again, this is super good, we get these out early, we can start gaining some life for our alternative win condition and if it's later on in the game it is very very good at destroying uh, big dudes so yeah if we've got dinosaurs coming at us we can at least kill them off with our gifted etherborn so we're having a whole playset of those uh, next in the two drops we have a playset of glory bound initiate which is uh, for one and a white uh, human warrior uh, with uh, well, he's three. He's a three-one. But um, if you exert him, uh, when he attacks, he gets plus one plus three and gains life link till the end of turn, making him a four-four life linker. So we definitely got to keep a place out of these. Um, this is super important for us gaining as much life as we possibly can um, to either continue the game uh, later on uh, and survive, um, or get us closer to our sort of target number of life if we're going to go down the route of um, our alternative win condition so this is fantastic obviously if you decide in your sideboard that you want to have some combat tricks and then start untapping this um, after it's exerted so we can use it again the next time um, that is a possibility I'm not too sure if I'm going to do that at the minute but it is an option And finally, for our one drops, we've got Anoint a Priest. Uh, Anoint a Priest is a one and a white for a one three, a human cleric, and whenever a creature token enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. So this is the beginning of um, the cats and also other creatures, um, possibly in a later game, which we'll be coming up to uh, pretty damn soon. So, um, yeah, if we're going to pop a cat back out, then, um, because it's a token, if we've got a Nointer Priest out, we will gain a life. Again, that is super important. Also, we've got the opportunity to embalm this one as well, which will allow this to come back. And um, with some of the other cards that we have coming up, as far as uh, enchantments and so on, um, we could be having possibly more than one. So we'll be getting to that one shortly. So, yeah good old embalm we're going to keep getting things back for a higher value and hopefully also gain life in the three drops uh, we are running only two of them as he's legendary but we're going to be running uh, Campbell console of allocation uh, for one white and a black we've got a two three human advisor and this is fantastic whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell that player loses two life and you gain two life so again we're draining and gaining this is brilliant. Um, it continues to uh, increase our life total to keep us going, or also to get us to our win condition, as I've mentioned a fair few times now. So, uh, and obviously they lose life too. So, I'm very happy with this card. It is highly annoying. I have played against it. It is a pain. So, um, yes, got to have two of those. In the four drops, uh, we have. 
the start of our horses, which is obviously the main part of this deck, to be honest. Um, we have a playset of Dusk Charger for three and a black. We have a 3-3 three, three horse, but it's got Send. So if you control ten or more permanents, so creatures, lands, enchantments, whatever, if you have ten, you get the city's blessing. Oh. It then gets a plus two, plus two, and we then have a five, five horse. That is one of the horses. The next horse we have, top of the curve, we've got Crested Sun Mare, and we have a playset of them. Uh, Crested Sun Mare is a five, five horse for three white, white, and other horses you control have indestructible. So, if we can get Crested Sun Mare out, our fantastic dust chargers, hopefully with Ascend and being 5-5, five five, will now have Indestructible. The other thing, and this is super important, this is why we have quite a lot of things with life gain. At the beginning of each end step, if you gained life this turn, create a 5-5 five five white horse creature token. When we do this, in whichever form we're going to do it, and that horse will have Indestructible also. So we are trying to pump out as many horses as possible and either just go full on in there with a mass herd of horses. Is it herd? I have to check that. Herd of horses. Um, and go in for straight to the face. That is our main win condition. Also, we have a life gain. And we'll be coming up to that bit rather shortly. For our non-creature spells, we're starting with three copies of... Etherflux Reservoir, a artifact for four colourless mana, and whenever you cast a spell you gain one life for each spell you cast this turn. So you cast a spell you get one life, if you cast two spells you get three life. One for the first one, two for the second one, then add the number together. That's how that one accumulates. Um, if you pay 50 life, um, Etherflux Reservoir deals 50 damage to target creature or player. So with all our life gain, uh, if we happen to hit the 50, then uh, we can pay 50 life, and then we can just go straight in uh, to the face of our player. It's not combat damage, so in theory we can't have any fog action going on. Um, it isn't going to nullify the damage, and it will get through. So, we are having three copies of those. Uh, next, we are going to be having a playset of Anointed Procession. Uh, the most expensive card in this deck. Um, Anointed Procession uh, for three and a white. It's an enchantment with an effect. If an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice that many of those tokens instead. So again, with everything that has had Embalm, um, if we were managed to, once Anointed Procession is out, put down one cat, the Procession would then make it twice that amount. So we would have two cats. Um, that will also go for Anoint uh, Priest as well, um, and also our horses. Um, if we happen to have two of these out, then they will stack. So we get one token, the first Anointed Procession will double it, make it two. The second Procession will double it, make it four. Um, every time a token enters, if we have our Anointed Priest out, we would gain one life. Um, so for that example, we would then gain four life, uh, in addition to the tokens that uh, we've just created. And that will get us closer to our 50 life, if that is the direction we're going to be going to. We're also playing two Authority of the Consoles, which is great against token strategies. Um, it's an enchantment. It's uh, one white mana, and uh, it is creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped, which is brilliant. Uh, and whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your opponent's control, you gain one life. So you could gain tons of life with this. Um, also, because one mana, we might get a chance to play a couple of cards um, in our turn. And if we've got Etherflux Reservoir out, um, the life game will stack off of those triggers, and it will get us a lot closer to 50 life, if that's the direction we're going to be going. Um, another one drop uh, is going to be Fatal Push. Uh, we're going to be playing two copies. Uh, if you don't have these, uh, you could use Walk Plank uh, for non-Merfolk strategies. Uh, Fatal Push 
It's a pretty fantastic uh, destroy target creature uh, if it has a converted mana cost of two or less. But if we have the revolt trigger, possibly our cats died, who knows, um, we could get rid of something which has a mana cost of four or less uh, because we've had something leave the battlefield this turn. So, yeah, very cheap spell, brilliant. We can gain life from it also. Do like this card quite a lot. Uh, next, we've got two Rush of Vitality. Um, for two mana, one and a black, uh, we have an instant with target creature gets plus one, plus zero, and gains lifelink and indestructible until the end of turn. This, um, I really hope, is going to save our horse, our main, main horse. Um, if we can keep Crested Sun Mare alive, um, then we keep the rest of our horses indestructible. So it also gives it lifelink. And then we can uh, pile on in for more. So, um, yeah, this is a nice little combat trick. Something that will allow us to keep that horse going. And, uh, yeah, I like this card a lot. Uh, next, three mana. Uh, two and a black. We've got Cartouche of Ambition. Uh, we're going to be playing two copies of this one. And the main target for this enchantment is our horses. So, um, yeah, we need to get this on Dusk Charger. If we've got the city's blessing, uh, then it's going to be a 6 6. It's going to be indestructible, and it's also going to have lifelink. Um, we can also put, obviously, the minus one, minus one on target creature to hopefully kill something off or just make it a little bit smaller. But the fact that we've now got a 6 6 horse is pretty fantastic, and um, yeah, it's going to be gaining life and hopefully making more tokens, fingers crossed. So, uh, yeah, not bad at all. Our final card um, is one copy of Fumigate. Um, it is five mana, three white white, and it destroys all creatures. And you gain one life for each creature destroyed this way. So, we could just get rid of everything. We could get rid of so many things that it will take us over the edge because it is destroy all creatures, which means our lovely artifact will still be around. And that means if we then suddenly have 50 life, we can ping them for 50 and finish the game out. The other thing is, our mighty fine horses, they should all be indestructible, hopefully. Um, so we could do a nice old board wipe and just leave the horses standing. Um, in that case, the board state will be mighty fine and we can gallop on in, hopefully for the win. So, uh, yeah, one of those. Possibly we could put a few more in the sideboard. I haven't done the sideboard for this deck tech. I'm not 100% sure at the moment. I need to play this deck more before I can start swapping things around depending on who I'm playing. Um, but feel free in the comment section to let me know what you think should go into the sideboard. And obviously all the changes also. Um, that would be great. Uh, finally, our land base. Uh, we have 22 lands. Um, not many. I'm hoping this is going to be alright. Uh, we are going to have four concealed courtyards. Um, and we're also going to be followed by eight swamps and ten planes. So that is it. In theory, if uh, you didn't have the funds or you don't happen to have concealed courtyard, then just go swamps and planes. Um, I wouldn't go half and half. Maybe slightly more in the direction of planes, just by a card or two. But yeah, if you don't have the funds or whatever, then just go plain old lands. Why not? Anyway, let me know what you think um, of black white reservoir horse um look forward to your comments and advice please let me know and uh ding that bell for notifications for future magic the gathering content um please like share and subscribe and thanks for watching cardboard badger